thing that we didn't end up outside. As you can see why it was beautiful and it was rainy. It was beautiful and rainy again. All the matter the last half an hour or so. We are inside today and uh, we celebrate Holy Mass uh, honoring Chuck and Elaine Ripetti for their 50 years of wedded bliss together as of yesterday, correct? Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Um, before we get to that, I want to run through our few announcements for today. We'll also have a baptism after Holy Mass uh, that will be of Weiler Kostanka. It will also be Deacon Jim's first baptism that he is going to do of his own grandson. So that'll be a, a beautiful thing. The family prefer to have it after Holy Mass. This week, uh, Tuesday, there will be our Swenson's fundraiser. You can grab um, uh, one of the flyers that are downstairs or just bring your phone. I emailed them. I emailed something fake, too. Sorry about that. Uh, but also put it on Facebook. So you can go there between 4 and 9 on Tuesday, uh, and that will give us 15% off your total bill. Uh, Wednesday, our monthly, our weekly food ministry is served. We had a record-breaking week last week. 63? 63. 63 meals served on a weekly basis. So that's, you know, we're up around 225 per month. It's a wonderful thing that's being done here. Thursday at 10 a.m., Mass for the Transfiguration. Uh, we will have the church open if anybody would like to come and worship for that. We also will be broadcasting it live, so that's Thursday at 10 a.m., a feast day of our Lord. And finally, Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. is our fourth drive through dinner. It's a busy week, uh, which is going to be kielbasa and cabbage and noodles, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, those flyers are mailed out to you, and uh, if you want to make a reservation, the info is there as well. So, uh, I also want to give a shout-out, hello, to... Uh, Holy Mother of Sorrows Parish in DuPont, who are tuning in from Spunia Farm. It's their weekend there, so hello to them, and thank you for joining us this morning. With that said, I'm going to take three steps over to my right and offer a blessing. Keep my distance. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On this, the 50th anniversary of your wedding day, we desire the blessing of Almighty God upon you and upon your family. Honorable spouses, you have now shared 50 years of married life. It is therefore right and proper that you give thanks to the Lord for his many blessings, and that you ask for the grace of the Holy Spirit to continue in God's love until death. Let us pray. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. Let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who did enlighten the hearts of your faithful with the light of the Holy Spirit, grant that, instructed by the same Holy Spirit, we may know what you are to do, fulfill worthily and uprightly all the obligations called for us in married life and evermore rejoice in holy comfort through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who had united our first parents, Adam and Eve, in holy bond, bless these jubilarians, Chuck and Elaine Ripetti, who were joined in sacramental union some 50 years ago. Through the workings of the Holy Spirit, keep inflamed in their hearts the fire of holy love, May this holy affection sweeten their share of life sorrows and disappointments, strengthen them, draw them closer to you, and one day unite them with you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us pray. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you as you celebrate 50 years together, now and forever, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A blessing be upon the family that loves and supports you so, both those who are here and those who are not. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
the Matthew word is that there is a day surrounded by goodness. So God bless you, Elaine and Chuck, as we offer this mass uh, for your bounty, for your family, for, again, as the prayer said, for more years of wedding bliss. We celebrate the contemporary rite of our mass using our first Eucharistic prayer this day, so let us calm our hearts as we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. My dear brothers and sisters, please now kneel and make a personal and private examination of conscience. Now recite with me the second Confidier. <coughs> I confess to Almighty God, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault. If my thoughts, in my words, and what I have done or failed to do, I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, Throughout the announcements, you heard everything that's going on at this parish this week, something virtually every day, and there's a lot going on. Please pray for your parish this day. Take a mental picture of all those who are gathered here who are in need of prayer and lifting up. And again, pray for all those in our parish this day. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines. The eyes of all the world will be to you. You give them their food in due season. You open wide in your hand and satisfy the desires of every good man. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord has given me and has now given us to you, O God. Lord, have mercy. The Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. The Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to the people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, who has taken away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand. Says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the Lord, 
honor him? No. Don't spend your money for what is not right. Your wages for what fails to satisfy. Eat me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come, come to me, he told me. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew you the everlasting covenant, the benefits of shared to David. This is the word of the Lord.
Those who ate were about 5,000 men, not counting women and children. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Unfortunately, know the answer to things that keep us from God. 
each passing year that we come to worship on a Sunday morning, we see more and more empty pews. You can't help but read anything that tells us that the church is not dying, but there's chinks in the armor of the church and how many people consider to be Christians or even consider to believe in God. Now, to answer St. Paul, yeah, we know a lot of things that separate us from the love of God, the love of Christ. We know it's that when we're too focused on money, on our jobs, on the love of materials, or the worst, apathy. Apathy. How easy it was it to be apathetic during uh, this pandemic? And all you had to do was click on the TV for God knows how many months it was to watch, to watch church or to not watch church. And how easy was it to lose focus when you had the comforts of home all around you? It's just different. And I'm not connecting it to apathy, but of course, I knew so many people that came to me and said, you know, Father Jason, at the beginning, in mid-March, I was so focused on those broadcasts. And by the time late April came around, I, you know, I forgot it was even Sunday. Who knows, that's how that was, those few months were as well, and I hope that we don't have to repeat any of that stuff. Things that I mentioned really do separate us from the love of Christ. So our focus isn't on Him anymore. We know all those common things that distract us from God. And St. Paul tells us confidently that no matter what, if we are lovers of Christ, we will be able to put those things aside when we have to. We'll be able to figure out true lovers of Christ who are in love with Jesus, and we'll be able to separate those things. Even if our disdain for those who should be doing that uh, isn't, uh, doesn't jive with what we believe, we can do that too. So today's Holy Gospel. Our Lord and Savior had just found out somebody he loved had passed away. Not just passed away, but was executed. Not only his cousin, not only his family member, but the one who heralded his coming. The one who Jesus said was the greatest prophet of them all. It was a relationship. Feeling surely tremendous emotions, all Jesus wanted to do was the same thing you or I want to do when we lose somebody that we love. We want to be alone. We want to reflect. We want to think about their life and our interactions with that person. So Jesus went to go do that, the scripture says. And he wanted to go pray to God as well. But the job of a powerful preacher man in that time was relentless. And instead of having a moment to think about his cousin, to think about the one who was killed, instead of having proper time to grieve, students need that. He was called to work. In his own sadness, Scripture says, think about how sad he was, that Jesus had pity on those who were coming before him to hear him preach. In his sadness, he had pity on everyone else. After wrapping up what he uh, was preaching about quite late, uh, they needed to be fed, and Jesus said to his disciples, there's no need uh, for them to go away. Give them food yourselves leaving the apostles going, now, yeah, he's talking about. Five loaves and two fish are all we have. And of course we know what happens next. The unnamed little boy that's present in the other scripture, the other evangelist, comes forth with that bit of food, the result of 12 wicker baskets left over, and the tummies of 5,000 men, and an uncounted amount of women and children. Full. It's very difficult for me to imagine the amazement of those gathered. Of course it is. You can't see anything like that. But unfortunately, many of them never noticed the miracle. They were too wrapped up in the fact that they were enjoying a free, endless buffet of delicious fish and bread. Jesus would later lament the fact that these people didn't even come to hear the word. They came for a free meal. But those disciples, with that little boy helping out, laid the seeds that were planted to become the Eucharist. Uh, a miraculous, mysterious meal that if you keep on scratching your head and bring over, you're still not going to quite figure it out. <laughs> Similarly, this meal of the 5,000, feed the 5,000 that was offered with that troubled heart, Jesus was grieving that loss. In the same way he would offer that last supper meal with a troubled heart, knowing that one of his best friends was going to betray him. But in all of it, prophecy was still fulfilled. They listened to his words, they enjoyed a meal, whether it was the Last Supper or on that mountainside. 
Heed me, and you shall eat well. And friends, we're to be comforted with the fact that effort is always going to be poured forth into supporting our souls. The church will always be relentless. Relentless, I say, in how it tries to minister to you. God, troubled may he be of the events of the world and the tearing apart of our hearts in America and everywhere else, he's still more than able to provide for us, epitomized in the workings of his son, Jesus Christ, will here on earth. In today's gospel, people needed the good word and they needed to eat, and they got both of those things. Today we need, we need peace in our nation uh, for many reasons. We need respite from a pandemic. Well, the Lord really does know what else that we need. Find comfort in the Lord today, however it may be. I know your arms are sticking to the wooden pews. It is on 99% humidity here today, but the Lord is waiting for you to lean upon him. Receive his sacred body, the food that is to make us comforted, the food that we shall eat well, and hear that familiar passage, how he fed 5,000, reflect on his word, and reflect on his feeding of you this day. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
purify our hearts, and that we do not come to the heavenly feast of unworthily. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me.
together first meeting in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free from all my sins and from every evil, keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. Reading in your 
your spirit, resting on your promises, walking in your ways. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the same Holy Spirit, 